You know, the U.S. and the international community with respect to North Korea has actually had a pretty good week. We had a, a unanimous U.N. Security Council resolution to strengthen sanctions against North Korea with China and Russia joining us uh, in that vote. And then at ASEAN, there are a lot of strong statements coming out of ASEAN that I think also reinforce that the global community has expressed its view that North Korea really needs to stand down this program. Uh, so I think in response to that, the North Koreans' rhetoric has just ratcheted up louder and louder and more threatening. So I think the president, what the president was doing is sending a strong message to North Korea in language that Kim Jong-un would understand because he doesn't seem to understand diplomatic language. And I think the president just wanted to be clear to the North Korean regime that the U.S., you know, unquestionable ability to defend itself, will defend itself and its allies. And I think it was important that he deliver that message to avoid any miscalculation on their part. Well, one of their, one of North Korea's responses was to say it's going to direct missiles at Guam. Uh, that's exactly where you are headed right now. Did you consider rerouting? Well, look, the North Korean uh, missile capability can point in many directions. So uh, Guam is not the only place that could be under threat. Uh, no, I never considered rerouting uh, the trip back, and I do not believe that there, there is any imminent threat in my own view. Do you think there's a longer-term uh, threat, uh, specifically about Guam, but uh, against the region in general? Well, I hope not. Again, uh, what we're hopeful is that this pressure campaign, which the entire world now has joined us in, uh, and with the engagement of China and Russia, uh, two of North Korea's closest neighbors, that they can begin to persuade the regime uh, that they need to reconsider the current pathway they're on. Uh, think about engaging in a dialogue about a different future. Have China and Russia been helpful at all to you in the last 24 hours? Have you spoken with your counterparts and have they helped in any way? Well, I haven't spoken to them since we left Manila, uh, which was, I guess, about a day and a half ago. But we had direct discussions in Manila about the situation. Uh, I know that they were having uh, talks as well with a representative from North Korea. I think that is evidence that they have very good open channels of communication uh, to be able to talk to the regime in North Korea. And we hope uh, that they will be encouraging them uh, to stand down their program, to abide by the UN Security Council resolutions, uh, which both China and Russia have voted for in the past. Uh, so I'm hopeful that they can use their influence, and I believe they do have influence uh, with the regime, uh, to bring them to a point of dialogue, uh, but with the right expectation of what that dialogue will entail. Has anything happened in the last 24 hours to lead you to believe that we are moving towards a military option, perhaps more quickly than anticipated? I have nothing that I have seen and nothing that I know of would indicate that the situation has dramatically changed in the last 24 hours. Do you have any immediate diplomatic plans to de-escalate the situation that could have an impact within days instead of months or years? Well, we have a very active, ongoing diplomatic effort, most of which is behind the scenes because that's where diplomacy is most effective. Uh, we have very open uh, conversations and our telephone lines remain open, certainly to China and Russia, as well as our allies, and I think publicly we've been pretty clear in our statements uh, directed at the North Koreans as to what we would like to see happen, uh, and to make clear to them that we do not seek to be a threat to them. But we have to respond to the serious threats that they make towards us. There have been calls for you to launch a new diplomatic effort. Do you feel that a new strategy may be warranted? I do not. I think the strategy we're currently on uh, is uh, working, in fact. Again, we have now garnered widespread international support, uh, obviously not just with the U.S. Security Council resolution, but globally countries are speaking out and expressing the same view as to what North Korea should do, which is not be a threat to the stability of the region. I think, in fact, the pressure is starting to show. I think that's why the rhetoric coming out of Pyongyang is beginning to become louder and more threatening. Uh, whether we've got them backed into a corner or not is difficult to say, but diplomatically, you never like to have someone in a corner without a way for them to get out. 
And what is Pyongyang's way out? Talks. Talks with the right uh, expectation of what those talks will be uh, will be about. Do you have any advice for Americans? Should they be worried? No, I think Americans should sleep well at night, I have no concerns about uh, this particular uh, rhetoric of the last few days. I think the, the president, again, uh, as commander in chief, I think he felt it necessary to issue a very strong statement directly to North Korea. But I think what the president was just reaffirming is the United States has the capability to fully defend itself from any attack and defend our allies, and we will do so. And so the American people should sleep well at night.